The Starship Odyssey, a sleek vessel built for both exploration and conflict, drifted through the cold expanse of deep space, its engines humming softly. Captain Sarah Jennings, a seasoned leader with keen eyes and a sharper mind, stood at the helm, her gaze fixed on the star-studded blackness beyond the viewport. Anything on the long-range scanners, Ravi? Sarah's voice cut through the quiet hum of the Odyssey's operations deck. Ravi, the communications officer, adjusted his headset, fingers dancing over the holographic console. It's mostly quiet, Captain, but there's a faint blip. It's irregular, like a coded distress signal, but not one I'm familiar with. Sarah straightened, interest peaked. Location? Edge of the regular sector, uncharted territories. If it's a distress signal, it's coming from deep within a region we've not mapped. Theo, the ship's engineer and resident tech wizard, chimed in from his station. Let me see if I can clean it up. His hands moved with practiced ease, enhancing the signal's clarity. Suddenly, the deck speakers emitted a series of harmonic pulses, complex and resonant, structured in a way that suggested a language rather than random noise. Theo's eyes lit up. It's definitely a structured transmission. I think it's a call for help, encoded in an ancient dialect. We're looking at a high probability of it being from Virelia. My old linguistics professor would have a field day with this. Sarah leaned over Theo's shoulder to look at the spectral analysis on his screen. Virelia, isn't that rumored to be ruled by a monarchy? Possibly even a queen? Ravi, still monitoring the transmissions, nodded. Legends say Virelia is home to the Starborn dynasty. If these legends are true and this is their queen... Sarah's decision was swift, her command resolute. Set a course for Virelia. Prepare for potential hostilities. If a queen is in distress, it may well be a situation ripe with danger and opportunity. The Odyssey's journey to Virelia took them near the edge of a notorious asteroid field known as the Gorgon's Belt. Composed of floating debris and unstable energy crystals, it was a navigational nightmare for any spacefarer. Zara, are you sure we can navigate through this? Sarah asked, eyeing the dense cluster of asteroids displayed on the main screen. Zara, the ship's pilot, flashed a confident grin. With a bit of luck and some sharp piloting, we'll make it through. Strap in everyone, it's going to get bumpy. As the Odyssey approached the edge of the Gorgon's belt, the ship began to shudder under the impacts of smaller debris. Zara's hands flew over the controls guiding the ship with precision. Each asteroid they dodged seemed to be followed by an even larger one, their paths unpredictable due to the gravitational pull of the energy crystals scattered throughout the belt. Theo, monitoring the ship's shields, called out, Shield strength at 70% and dropping. We can't take many more hits like that. Ravi watched the radar, his voice tense. Big cluster coming up in three, two, one. Zara pushed the throttle the Odyssey's engines flaring as she maneuvered through a particularly dense cluster of asteroids. The ship grazed a large rock, sending a jolt through the hull. The crew was thrown against their restraints, hearts racing. Nice move, Theo exclaimed, his relief palpable as he checked the systems. Shields holding at 45%. It's now or never to clear this field. With the worst behind them, Zara found her rhythm, weaving through the asteroids with increasing confidence. The energy crystals in the field glowed ominously, casting eerie lights inside the cockpit, adding a surreal beauty to their perilous journey. Finally, as the last of the asteroids dwindled behind them, the crew let out a collective sigh of relief. The Odyssey emerged on the other side of the Gorgon's belt, the space ahead clear, and the path to Virelia open. We're through, Zara announced, easing back the throttle. Everyone still with us? Sarah nodded in approval, impressed with her pilot's skill. Well done, Zara. Let's proceed to Virelia. Stay alert, we're not out of danger yet. As the Odyssey approached Virelia, the crew's relief from escaping the asteroid field was short-lived. The serene blue and green planet was orbited by a squadron of sleek, menacing-looking alien fighters that quickly surrounded their ship. Unidentified vessel, you are in restricted space. State your purpose, came a stern voice over the comm system. Sarah, poised at the command console, responded with calm authority. We received a distress call originating from this sector. We're here to assist. There was a pause, the tension palpable in the Odyssey's bridge. As the alien ships maintained their positions, their weapons clearly charged and ready. Distress call? Stand by for verification, the voice returned, more curious than hostile now. Moments felt like hours as the crew waited. Finally, the voice crackled through again. 
Your claim has been verified. I am Commander Varric of the Virilian Royal Guard. Follow our lead and maintain your distance. The alien fighters shifted formation, creating a path for the Odyssey. As they approached the planet, the beauty of Virilia became apparent. Vast oceans interspersed with sprawling green landscapes and towering cities. However, the serene view from above belied the tension below. Upon landing, the crew was met by Varric, who stood tall and imposing in his ceremonial armor, flanked by guards. The Queen's palace is currently under siege by insurgents, Varric explained, his voice grave. Your arrival is timely, perhaps too timely. We need to understand your capabilities and intentions. Sarah stepped forward, meeting Varric's gaze. We specialize in crisis situations. We can help fortify your defenses, provide medical aid, and assist in tactical operations. Our intentions are to offer aid as requested by the distress call. Varric studied them for a moment before nodding slowly. Very well, I will escort you to the palace myself. There you will meet with Her Majesty's remaining loyal advisors. Time is of the essence. As they traveled towards the palace, the evidence of unrest was everywhere. Barricades in the streets, smoke rising in the distance, and the occasional sound of distant explosions painted a picture of a world on the brink. Arriving at the palace, the situation was even more dire than expected. The once magnificent structure was now fortified with energy shields and guarded by anxious soldiers. Varric led them inside, where they were ushered into a secure war room. Queen Lyra will join us shortly, Varric announced. Prepare your assessment and be ready to present your plan. The fate of Varelia may well depend on the next moves we make together. As they awaited the Queen's arrival, Sarah and her crew quickly conferred, pooling their knowledge and resources. They were no longer just rescuers responding to a call. They were potential saviors of a planet, a role that none had anticipated when they first decoded the distress signal that had brought them here. In the fortified war room of the palace, tension hung thick in the air as Queen Lyra entered. Despite the siege, she exuded an air of regal composure. Her gaze swept over Captain Sarah Jennings and her crew, a flicker of hope passing through her steely eyes. Thank you for heeding our call, Queen Lyra began, her voice resonant and commanding. Varelia is in turmoil. Rebels have encircled the palace, demanding my abdication. We must act swiftly to secure the palace and stabilize the region. Sarah stepped forward. Your Majesty, we've assessed the situation. Our plan involves using a two-pronged approach, defensive fortifications here in the palace, and a tactical strike to disrupt the rebels' command structure. We believe this will give us the upper hand. Varric, who had been listening intently, nodded in agreement. I will lead the palace defenses. Captain Jennings, your team has experience in unconventional warfare. I trust you will handle the offensive operations effectively. As they finalized their strategies, the ground shook with a nearby explosion. Time was running out. With a quick exchange of determined looks, Sarah and her crew, accompanied by a few of Virelia's loyal soldiers, moved out. The palace's underground tunnels served as their initial pathway. The narrow, dimly lit corridors echoed with the distant sounds of conflict, a constant reminder of the battle raging above. Emerging from the tunnels, Theo and Ravi set up a makeshift command center in an abandoned building close to the rebels' suspected headquarters. Using scavenged equipment, they managed to jam the rebels' communications, sowing confusion among their ranks. Meanwhile, Sarah and Zara, along with a squad of Virilian soldiers, advanced towards the rebel command post. Stealth was paramount, the element of surprise their greatest asset. As they neared their target, a lookout spotted them. Instantly, the air was filled with blaster fire. Ducking behind debris, Sarah called out, Zara, flank left. Theo, Ravi, we need a diversion. On cue, Theo and Ravi triggered a series of controlled explosions in a nearby sector, drawing some of the rebels away from Sarah and Zara's position. Seizing the moment, they surged forward, engaging the enemy in close quarters combat. Zara, with her quick reflexes, disabled several rebels, clearing a path to their command hub. Inside, they found crucial intelligence on the rebels' operations and their supply lines. With the command post compromised and their leaders captured, the rebels' morale began to falter. Sarah's team used this advantage to push them back, gradually reclaiming lost ground towards the palace. Back at the palace, Varric and his troops, bolstered by the success of Sarah's offensive, repelled the remaining rebel forces. By nightfall, the siege was broken and the palace secured. Queen Lyra met them as they returned, 
her expression one of profound relief mixed with newfound respect. Your bravery and strategic acumen have saved our palace and our people, she declared. Tonight, we celebrate our victory. Tomorrow, we rebuild. That night, as they gathered to honor their hard-fought victory, Sarah and her crew shared a moment of camaraderie and reflection. They had come to Varelia as rescuers, but they would leave as heroes of a grateful planet. The celebration of their victory was short-lived. Early the next morning, Queen Lyra summoned Captain Sarah Jennings and her crew to the palace's strategy room. With the initial siege lifted, the focus shifted to securing the Queen's rule and stabilizing the planet. Last night's success was crucial, but we have only weakened the rebels, not defeated them, Lyra stated, her voice steady but concerned. They still hold significant territory, and without their leader, they could become unpredictable. Sarah nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. Your Majesty, securing your reign will require more than military might. We need to win the hearts and minds of your people. The rebels thrive because they exploit discontent. We should address the causes that fuel their support. Lyra considered this, her gaze thoughtful. A wise strategy. I propose a twofold approach. First, we continue to press our advantage militarily to keep the rebels from regrouping. Second, we initiate reforms that address the grievances of my people. I will need your help in both. Varric interjected. The military operations can be led by our forces now that we've regained momentum. What we require from you, Captain Jennings, is assistance in strategic planning and implementing these reforms effectively. Theo, always ready with technical solutions, spoke up. We can start by restoring communications across the planet. If we can get your message of reform out, it could undermine the rebels' propaganda and restore faith in your leadership. Ravi added, And I can help set up secure lines for your advisors to coordinate efforts without interference from remaining rebel factions. Queen Lyra was impressed. Your skills are invaluable. Let us begin at once. The following days were a blur of activity. Sarah and her team worked alongside Virilian officials, using the Odyssey's advanced technology to enhance infrastructure and communications. Public addresses from Lyra, broadcasted planet-wide, spoke of unity, reform, and a renewed promise for a better future. Meanwhile, Zara assisted in training Virilian pilots, enhancing their aerial capabilities, which proved essential in quelling pockets of resistance swiftly and decisively. As reforms took hold, the public's perception began to shift. Reports of communities rallying to support the Queen and turning against the rebels became more frequent. Slowly, the planet stabilized, the chaos of rebellion giving way to cautious optimism. After weeks of intense effort, Queen Lyra held a public assembly in the capital city, broadcasted across the entire planet. Flanked by Sarah and her crew, she announced the successful implementation of several reforms and the reduction of rebel activity by over 70%. To the crew of the Odyssey, you have been more than our allies. You have been our saviors and friends. The courage and wisdom you have shown have not only saved a queen but revitalized a world, Lyra proclaimed, her voice echoing over the cheers of thousands. With Virelia's situation stabilizing and the populace rallying behind Queen Lyra's reforms, the remaining rebel factions became desperate. Intelligence gathered by Ravi revealed that the rebels were planning a final assault to overthrow the queen during a major public address in the palace throne room. We must thwart this assault, Queen Lyra declared in an urgent meeting with Captain Sarah Jennings and her crew. If they succeed, it will not only cost us the throne, but also the lives of many innocent people. Sarah nodded, her expression determined. We'll set up a defensive perimeter around the palace. Theo, prepare surveillance drones for continuous aerial monitoring. Zara, coordinate with Varric to organize the ground forces. Theo quickly set up a network of drones that provided a live feed of the palace surroundings, while Zara and Varric efficiently deployed Virilian forces around the strategic points of the palace. On the day of the address, the palace was brimming with citizens and dignitaries, all unaware of the potential danger. The throne room, a grand hall with towering columns and shimmering light fixtures, was filled to the brim. Queen Lyra stood at the podium, her presence commanding attention and admiration. As Lyra began her speech, Sarah, positioned discreetly near the stage with her team, kept her eyes on the feeds from Theo's drones. Suddenly, one of the drones picked up movement in a sector it shouldn't have, armed individuals moving stealthily towards the palace's rear entrance. Movement detected, 
Possible hostiles approaching from the West Wing, Theo reported quietly into his communicator. Intercept them, non-lethal force if possible, Sarah instructed Zara and a squad of palace guards. The rebels, underestimating the heightened security, were caught off guard as Zara and her team intercepted them at the entrance. A brief skirmish ensued and the rebels were quickly subdued and detained with minimal noise, preventing panic among the assembly. Meanwhile, inside the throne room, another group of rebels had managed to infiltrate among the crowd. Ravi, monitoring communications, picked up their covert signals. Hostiles inside the hall, Ravi whispered urgently. Sarah, they're disguised as civilians. Sarah scanned the crowd, her training allowing her to pick out the slight anomalies in behavior. Nervous glances, hands concealed under clothing. She moved quietly, signaling discreetly to nearby guards. Together, they closed in, swiftly neutralizing the threats before any harm could come to the attendees or the queen. With the internal and external threats contained, the assembly continued, most attendees none the wiser to the danger that had lurked among them. Queen Lyra's speech about unity and resilience seemed even more poignant given the circumstances. As the event concluded without further incident, Lyra approached Sarah, gratitude shining in her eyes. Your vigilance has once again saved many lives today. Your team's bravery and strategic acumen have been the cornerstone of our survival and success. That's what we're here for, Your Majesty, Sarah responded with a respectful nod. To ensure peace and safety for you and your people. In the aftermath of the thwarted assault, a palpable sense of relief swept through Virelia. Queen Lyra's leadership was no longer contested, and her reforms began to take root, transforming the planet into a beacon of hope and resilience. As the situation stabilized, a grand ceremony was organized in the palace's main courtyard, attended by citizens from across the planet and dignitaries from neighboring star systems. The event was not only a celebration of Virelia's newfound peace, but also an acknowledgement of the pivotal role played by Captain Sarah Jennings and her crew. Queen Lyra stood at the podium, her voice resonant and clear. Today we are not just celebrating the triumph over adversity, but also the forging of new bonds that have strengthened our world. To Captain Jennings and the brave crew of the Odyssey, you came to us as strangers and now leave as family. Your courage and wisdom have been instrumental in our victory. Turning to Sarah, Lyra continued, I owe you my life and the stability of my reign. As a token of our gratitude and to cement the bonds between our worlds, I offer you the Star of Virilia, our highest honor. Sarah stepped forward, humbled, as Lyra draped a luminescent metal around her neck. The metal, crafted from Virilian crystals, shimmered with a light that seemed to pulse with the life of the planet itself. All we ask in return is friendship and an alliance between our worlds. Let this be the foundation of our future interactions, Sarah said, her voice steady and sincere. A wise and noble request, Lyra agreed, her smile broad, and so it shall be. From this day forward, let our worlds be united in purpose and peace. The crowd erupted in cheers, a sound that mirrored the joy and optimism filling the courtyard. Music filled the air, and the celebration continued into the night with stories shared and dances exchanged under the starlit Virilian sky. Later, as the Odyssey prepared to depart, the crew gathered on the bridge, each member reflective of the journey they had undergone. We came here on a simple rescue mission, Theo remarked, his eyes on the stars ahead, and we're leaving having changed the course of a planet. And possibly the course of our own lives, Zara added, her hands poised above the navigation console. Who knows what other calls we might answer next? Sarah looked around at her crew, her expression a mix of pride and anticipation. Let's set a course for home, but keep your eyes open. Adventure has a way of finding us. As the Odyssey pulled away from Virelia, the planet shrinking into the distance, the crew felt a bittersweet farewell. They were leaving behind a world vastly different from the one they had arrived at, a world they had helped transform. As the Odyssey sailed through the quiet void of space, the crew felt a mix of relief and nostalgia. They were leaving behind a planet they had dramatically impacted and were now returning to familiar territory, the confines of known space where they could finally process the full extent of their recent adventure. Sarah stood by the main viewport, watching the stars streak past as the ship traveled at warp speed. She reflected on the crew's unexpected journey, a mission that started as a simple response to a distress signal and ended with them altering the fate of an entire world. The universe has a funny way of throwing the unexpected at us, 
Sarah mused aloud. Theo, who was checking the navigation systems, nodded. That's what makes this job exciting, Captain. You never know what's around the next star. Zara, always the pilot, chimed in from the helm. Speaking of which, should we start planning our next route? There's a whole galaxy out there waiting for us. Ravi, looking up from his communications console, added, And we'll be going into it with a new ally. Who knows how many more we might make out there. The conversation was light but thoughtful, each member of the crew aware that their experiences had changed them. They were no longer just a ship's crew. They were diplomats, heroes, and friends to a world they once knew nothing about. As they approached the edge of the solar system, Sarah received a transmission from Earth Command, congratulating them on their successful mission and welcoming them back. The message was warm and filled with praise for their courage and diplomacy. Looks like we might get a hero's welcome when we land, Sarah said with a smile. That's all well and good, Theo joked, but I'm looking forward to a good meal and maybe a long nap in my own bed. First round's on me when we hit the ground, Zara declared, eliciting smiles and nods of approval from the rest. The Odyssey continued on its course, its crew ready for a brief respite. Yet each member knew that the peace would be temporary. The cosmos was filled with endless possibilities, and their next call to adventure could come at any time. As the ship finally re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, the blue and green of their home planet filling the viewport, a sense of achievement mixed with anticipation for the future enveloped them. They had left as explorers and returned as interstellar diplomats, their lives forever intertwined with the stars they traveled among. The Odyssey touched down, and as the hatch opened, the crew was met with cheers and the flashing lights of the media, eager to capture the return of the heroes who went above and beyond the call of duty. Sarah stepped out first, the crew behind her, each ready to share their story but even more ready to embrace the next adventure, wherever and whenever it might call them. As they faced the crowd, it was clear that this journey was just one of many more to come, in the endless expanse of space where the Odyssey and her crew would always find their way.